um, mostly what I wanted to do was read something that was real special to me and really talks about why we're doing this the way we're doing it. And it's not about the death penalty, and it's not about any one faith, um, but it's something my sister sent me a few years ago, and she had been holding on to it for several years. She practices uh, Native American spirituality and has uh, a chaplain, Bearheart, and others that come visit her, and they were sending her information and trying to help her with her journey as she lives on death row. And she sent me this copy they made for her um, at the prison. They copied it. I shared it last year when I did the first journey, so some of you might have heard it before. And she wrote me a little note on it. I'm not sure where she got this, but she says that she got it. Um, I received this a few years ago, and I spoke with you about it. She wanted me to have it. It's a lot of really good stuff. Um, so this is called Attitude and the Rules for Being Human. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude is more important than facts. It's more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than success, than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearance than being gifted or skilled. It will make or break you. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude you will embrace for that day. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you we are in charge of our attitudes. And this says the rules for being human. So there's a list here, and she um, she uh, had a book called uh, The Journey on the Red Road that she had me get also, and I read that, and it's a Floyd, do you know, it's Floyd with buffalo hands or something like that. I can't remember right now. I didn't bring it with me. I brought so much stuff couldn't fit any more things in there. <laughs> but I'm not sure if this is from his book. I didn't find it in there, but it is um, a very beautiful list of these rules of how to be human. You will receive a body. You may like it or hate it, but it will be yours for as long as you live. How you take care of it or fail to take care of it can make an enormous difference in the quality of your life. Two, you will learn lessons. You are enrolled in a full-time informal school called life. Each day you will be presented with opportunities to learn what you need to know. The lessons given are often completely different from those you think you need. There are no mistakes, only lessons. Growth is a process of trial and error and experimentation. You can learn as much from failure as from success, maybe more. This one has really been speaking to me today. Um, a lesson is repeated until it is learned. A lesson will be presented to you in various forms until you have learned it. When you have learned it, as evidenced by a change in your attitude and ultimately your behavior, then you can go to the next lesson. Lessons, learning lessons does not end. Mm -hmm. This one I asked my grand, my aunt, she's turning 90 in September. She's a really wonderful person. And I asked her, so is it easy now? Is it over with? Did you learn everything? And she kind of patted me on the shoulder and she said, never <laughs> over. I was really sad. I was really excited thinking she's going to say how easy it is. She makes it look easy. Uh, but she said no. <laughs> it's not going to be over. So learning lessons does not end. There is not a stage of life that does not contain some lessons. As long as you live, there will be something more to learn. And the next one, there is no better. There is no better than here. When you are there, when your there has, well, this is hard for me to get this one and I read it through, when your there has a here, you will simply discover another there. So always looking to where you need to get to. Once it's here, you're going to find another one. That will again look better than what you have. And this one, others are merely mirrors of you. You cannot love or hate something about another person unless it reflects something you love or hate 
about yourself. When tempted to criticize others, ask yourself why you feel so strongly. Um, I have my medicine bag that I carry to my sisters. And when she gave it to me a few years ago, she'd been wearing it for years, and she had told me what was in it. And one of the things is two small stones. And she said that those stones remind her of the scripture. I believe it was in John. Um, he who has, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. And my thoughts went right away to her wrongful conviction. I'm thinking, yeah, who are they to convict her? <laughs> and she said, no, actually, it was for her own part. And trying to survive on the road is very stressful and very difficult and very dangerous at times. And maybe just emotionally dangerous at some times. And she wants to remember that she does not have the right to judge someone else and to try to put herself in their shoes before the fight starts or whatever might happen. And it's really helped her to stay out of trouble. And I really learned a big lesson from her that day that I was ready to say it was the other people. And she didn't say it was me, but she said she wants to remember to look at herself first. And I thought that was really beautiful. What you make of your life is up to you. You have all the tools and recourse you need. What you create with those tools and resources is up to you. Remember that through desire, goal setting, and unflagging effort, you can have anything you want. Persistence is the key to success. Just two more. The answers lie inside you. All the solutions to all of life's problems lie within your grasp. All you need to do is ask, look, listen, and trust yourself. You will forget all of this is the last one. Unless you consistently stay focused on the goals you have set for yourself, everything you've just read will not be a thing. And she wrote, I love you, your sister Carrie Lynn. So I just thought that was real appropriate for what we're framing this walk and this um, issue of ending the death penalty. And what we're asking from you and everyone you can share this with is to keep those thoughts and aim them towards us throughout this walk, please. And when you can, let us know that you thought of us that day because we're going to need that more than anything to keep the, the focus. The vision is that this is to end the death penalty, but that's just the ultimate symptom to the issues in our society. We are a violent, selfish society that needs compassion and empathy. And that's where my, my only worry today about the journey is that I would not represent that consistently on this trip. And so that's where I'm asking for. These guys will probably be great the whole time. Come here, Jamie. <laughs> I'm back from the bathroom. <laughs> but it is, it, we know the subject itself is difficult and then we're going to be walking and sleeping in a uh, tent and who knows where and um, some folks might not agree with us and might, might be antagonistic. Maybe we won't find that. Um, we're looking for not just everyone who agrees with us, but those who just want to hear and share time with us. And we would ask for your thoughts and prayers to come to us to help us have the right words, the right look, the right attitude, um, and at least give peace if nothing else. Just be silent. And namaste for however we would like to bless the other people who are really just like us.